Hello, this is Ben. Welcome to another tutorial. Here's a sample of what we're going to be doing today with smoke using some really funky shaders. This isn't fire, it's smoke. And I uh, hope you enjoy the tutorial. Let's dive in. We're going to start in our basic Blender project file. Make sure that we have cycles render enabled. And again, I like to have this little window on the bottom so I can see what I'm doing. Um, today we're going to do some quick smoke. So I'm going to take my default cube, scale it to 0.25 so it's much smaller. Control A to apply the scale. I don't think you really have to do that, but it's good practice. Um, and now I'm going to hit the space bar and type in, it's already there, quick, Q-U-I-C-K, and there are four quick features. We are going to choose quick smoke. Now it's very important when you apply quick smoke that you are in cycles render because in addition to actually adding smoke, and I'm going to show that by pressing option A right now, you can see that smoke doing its smoky thing. Um, in addition to creating that whole entire smoke setup that in the previous tutorial we spent uh, several minutes doing, um, it's also, as I, as I go into our node view, it's also going to create uh, a shader for this. So we can uh, take a look at this real quick. Uh, if you were in Blender Render, it would, cr it would create a shader but it would create a Blender internal renderer shader, which is very, very different from what we've got going here. Now this, once we take a look at this, you will see that it's pretty much the same thing. Let me show you, we've got two attributes, color and density. You really need to have done the previous tutorial for this to make sense if you're not familiar with Smoke, um, but if you are, you have done this by hand earlier. Here is a multiply node, which is what I've been calling my density controller. They have it set to five. If I go into my Cycles preview window here, um, and I would say to increase my, multi my multiplier by 10, it's going to become thicker. 50, it's going to become very, very thick. Um, we can, I'm going to use nodes for this light and increase the strength to something like 2500 and move over here so we can see the effects of the light. Back to our domain. Um, we could lower this to one, and it's gonna be very, very thin. There's our emitter cube, or flow, I guess. And you'll see that the multiply node, our density controller, which I'll set back to five for now, is moving into the density attributes of both the volume scatter and the volume absorption. We're using both of those nodes. Likewise, the color attribute is moving into both the volume scatter and the volume absorption. And the scatter and absorption are going into an add shader. So again, the color is being used twice. The density, which we're tweaking a bit with multiply, the density is being used twice, and those two are being added together. Now, when you do a quick smoke, it's gonna add this extra add shader, which is used for fire. We're not gonna talk about it in this tutorial. Think of it kind of like when you're at the doctor, when someone's in the hospital, think like in the movies, and uh, there's always that little extra thing that plugs into the IV so someone can give you a little extra medicine. Uh, that's kind of what this is. You can plug in additional shaders, and if you don't plug in shaders, since it's an add shader, you're adding nothing, it doesn't have any effect. I could add 100 add shaders and it'd make my uh, nodal thing look much more complicated than it actually is, uh, but it would have absolutely no effect on what's going on here. So I'm gonna press Control X to remove that add shader and Control X to remove this one. By pressing Control X instead of regular X, it just deletes it and keeps that line moving on to the next socket. So if you have been following the tutorials and you have this group basic volume shader that we created, uh, we talked about this in lesson two and we actually created this group and saved it to our default blend file in the third lesson. If we look at this basic volume shader, where am I, there we go, and hit the tab key to come in, you'll see we've got a color input and a density input, which go to the color and density of the scatter and absorption nodes, exactly what we saw with the quick smoke. And then those two are adding together and then the output goes to the volume. So when you do quick smoke, it gives you basically exactly what we did uh, in our previous tutorial and uses the basic volume shader from the second and third lessons um, to put it all together. So that's great. I could simply plug this multiply node then into density and I could plug my color node into color and send that one into the volume and you'll see it's going to look exactly the same because it is the same. I can delete those nodes and at least in my opinion this is a much prettier 
uh, easier to understand node setup for me. I mean, if you don't know what your basic volume shader is doing, I guess it could be more complicated. But you can always tab in. It just makes things nicer, especially when you have one attribute, one feature being fed into multiple uh, inputs. Just makes things nicer. Okay. So that's for using the volume absorption and volume scatter node. What other kind of nodes can we use for volume? Well, let's just take a, uh, another shader. Let's do diffuse. And uh, I'm going to do a couple things to set up for this. First, my cube is called cube. I'm going to change it to say smoke. Um, I'm going to call it flow. I kind of like emit, but I'm pretty sure they call it flow here. Yeah, it's called flow, which incidentally, you can see the settings. This is all set up by quick smoke under the physics tab when you click it. Your domain's going to have some features to it. Um, and we will do a little tweaking of that today, after all. Uh, in the render information, the render properties, under the Film tab, check Transparent. I like to do that sometimes when I'm working with Smoke. Uh, a, a second option is you could uncheck Transparent and go into the World options and change that background color to be totally black. And you get a lot of control now. You can see really what your smoke is doing, um, how you're lighting it and things like that. So I, I kind of like to use both approaches. Uh, I'll set it to be transparent. And now I can really see what's going on with my smoke. A lot of times with smoke, you're going to be compositing it with other things. I, I use smoke to composite in real world situations for special effects and stuff. I'm going to turn off my smoke flow. And uh, again, back to my domain. What if we plug a diffuse into the volume attribute? Nothing. It goes completely blank. Okay. Shift S allows me to change or to switch S for switch. My type of shader. What about glossy? No. In fact, none of these do anything except for volume and volume and one other. And that is emission. That's what we want to talk about here. Emission makes it a big glowing cloud that if I were to add a plane and scale it out here, and let's give this plane a texture and we'll make it pretty dark. Okay. You will see, especially if I delete my light. So now I have no lights in this scene. Turn off transparency. The background is completely black. There's nothing lighting this surface except for my domain. If I increase that strength to say five, it's going to light this more. Um, for good measure, I'm just going to uh, select my smoke flow and my smoke domain and I'm going to move it up along the z-axis until it's kind of sitting on the z-axis. I'm going to select my smoke flow and move it down so it's a little closer to the bottom of that. Move that down just to... No, no, I don't want to move. That's fine. Um, I'm going to have to replay this, actually. Let me turn off. I'm going to disable cycles for a minute. Move that up, and we'll stop it about there. There we go. And I just get a big block because nah, smoke is there. I've got density, I've got color, but they're not actually going into the volume. What's going into volume is emission. Well, can I use density and color to make sense of this? Sure. Let's take density and let's move uh, the density straight into strength, not uh, the multiply node, but density. There we go. Now it's apparently not very bright. It's not actually illuminating. I'm gonna turn off my smoke flow again. It doesn't seem to be illuminating that surface very much, but I could duplicate that multiply node, bring that in here. Now it's multiplied by five. You see it's lighting up a bit more. Do it by 50. It's lighting it up even more. So emission is a third node that you can use. And emission is what you're going to use with fire. Now I want to be very clear here. This is not fire. This is smoke. Okay. I am applying an emission shader to smoke. But the calculation for how these, what are called voxels, that we'll probably talk about at some point, but basically these, just the shapes, the way it's calculating the shape, these textures inside, um, it's calculating it to behave like smoke. Fire is similar, but not the same. And, you, and it, you, there are ways to create fire. We'll talk about that in a future tutorial, but for now we're just gonna focus on smoke. Okay, let's go into another blend a, a new Blender file. I'm opening up a second copy of Blender. That's one of the great things about Blender is you can have lots of copies of Blender running at the same time, which I often do. So I am in a second copy of Blender, and uh, we're just going to revisit real quickly some of the things that we did in the first tutorial 
uh, where it was just kind of a crash course introduction. We're gonna get a little more precise. I'm gonna go into my node editor. I'm gonna delete that guy. I'm going to do a, um, well, you know what? Let's just, let's just do a mission from the very beginning. That should just make things a bit easier. We're gonna emit right from the get-go, okay? One great thing about emission is it tends to be a bit faster than volume. So when you're testing stuff, emission is a great way to do it. I'm gonna input a texture, and I think I will use a sphere texture. So that's gonna be a gradient texture, and I'm gonna change the gradient type to spherical, and I'm going to send, the color and the fact are pretty much gonna be the same thing here. Generally, I send color to color, fact to fact, and actually, interestingly, you'll see this, it's gonna, or, it's gonna create an origin for my sphere down there in the lower corner. Or I could put my fac in there. If I remove my color, it's gonna do the same thing. Um, at this point, they're gonna have a similar reaction. I'm more interested in sort of playing it like density, which is gonna be like strength. And um, to that end, I'm also gonna add a math node in here. Set that to be multiply, and maybe set it to be two for now, okay. And uh, there's, I have a tutorial floating out there, just a brief one about texture coordinates, particularly generated versus object texture coordinates. Under input texture coordinate, you can bring that in. I have a number of these. Right now it's defaulting to tech generated coordinate and we are going to use an object texture coordinate. What you'll see right away is it's gonna move the center of that sphere. Let me undo it. You see how it's focusing it on the corner there? As soon as I add object, it centers it on the origin. So if I were to say enter tab mode, this hopefully this isn't too weird, enter tab mode, I'm gonna move it up along the G axis, the Z axis, sorry, press G to move. Move it up along the Z axis, and you see it's just cutting out that sphere, but the sphere isn't moving, it's just sitting there in one spot. The reason for that is because I'm in edit mode, and so my origin is staying in exactly the same place. So that makes things a lot easier, whereas if I move the cube, the sphere's going to move with it. Now, here I have my texture generator, Okay, this is gonna generate a value between zero and one. I have my final node output. And then I have uh, my, what I call the density controller here, which really is more like an emission strength controller at this point, but yeah, you know, it means the same thing. Serves a similar purpose. I'm going to do what we did in our previous tutorial, add a math node, and I'm going to add a greater than feature here, okay? And by, what am I, I shouldn't have turned that off. By adding my greater than feature, as you know, uh, we're moving from zero to one in this sphere. So the very center is going to be one, I think. Wait a minute, wait, let's figure this out. Greater than zero, center's gonna be, oh darn it. Someone's gonna do the math and be yelling at me. The point is, as you slide it back and forth, it creates a perfect threshold. Every pixel is going to be absolute zero or absolute one, depending on whether this gradient is larger than, is greater than or less than, whatever this number is. In fact, I kind of think of this as my threshold. It's a sort of threshold. If you're above or below the threshold, then you're gonna show up or not show up. That's the main thing that's most important to understand. I'm gonna duplicate my greater than node, plug that fact back into it, and instead of being 0.25, maybe I'll do 0.3. So it's gonna be a little different, okay? But you obviously aren't gonna see anything because it's not plugged in here. And I'm going to add another math node and this math node is going to be subtract. And I'm going to subtract the one from the other. And uh, now you'll see, I can control essentially the thickness of this sphere. All right, and if we were to uh, move this so it's cutting it out, get it in a direction that's useful for us here. Let's see, there we go. You can see that I am creating a, a hollow sphere, which is what we did with the Voronoi texture which has kind of randomly amassed uh, spherical gradients all across it throughout the texture. This is just a single sphere, okay? So I've got my greater than node. Let me just, now that we understand this idea, hopefully, I have my greater than node and my greater than node, and they are different values. This one is larger than that one. I'm going, in, in this case, it's larger than. Uh, I'm going to subtract it Subtract this result, which is a smaller sphere, even though it's a larger number. And if we didn't like that, we could maybe add an invert node here and make the gradient be backwards. We have a, we're subtracting this one from this one, and that's giving us this hollow sphere shape. 
and that we're still working in values of zero to one, and we send that into the multiply node. Okay. Now, it's, it's possible, it's very possible that we could end up with values other than zero to one. With subtract, for instance, we could end up with negative values, and if we multiplied those negative values, we'd have big negative values, and if that went into emission, it could actually cause the emission to have a negative emission, to actually suck light out. It would turn black. Uh, so if that happens, you'll know what's going on there. What I want to do is I want to be able to create a group that allows me to reuse this setup. A nice way to do that, rather than to enter these values by hand, I'd like to create something that's a little bit more intuitive. We're going to do input value. That just gives me a number. So I'm going to set this to 0 0.250, which matches this one. And remember how I called this my threshold? I'm going to still call it that. So under label here, press the letter N, it'll show up. Under label, not name, but label, I'm going to call this threshold. Okay, and I'm going to plug that into this lower value. Okay. Now I'm going to duplicate that, and rather than call this one threshold, I'm going to call it thickness. The reason I'm going to call it thickness is because I'm going to add a value to my threshold. So this will automatically update as I change my threshold. 3.320 is 0 0.250. 3.20 .0 is 0 0.070 higher. So I'm going to type in 070 here. Okay, I'm going to take a new math node, change this to add, and I'm going to add 0 0.070 to 0 0.250. So this add node okay, is going to give me 0 0.320. And we can test this here. If we just plug our value into that value, it shouldn't change, and it doesn't change. Okay. So what's great about this? The great thing about this is now I can change one value and they're both going to update together. So the thickness isn't going to change much. At a certain point, it's going to just kind of go totally crazy because it's going to go outside the boundaries of my sphere. Out of boundaries of my volume, I'm sorry. And then the math isn't going to work as well. But I can change my sphere just like that. Now, I am going to select not my inputs, but I'm going to select these four nodes. Okay, and I'm going to group them, control G. Great, so here we go. And again, if you did the third lesson where we talk about saving the shader for future projects, this should be familiar to you. You're going to notice immediately that we have lots of inputs that are going to the same thing. How do we make sense of this? Well, I'm going to tab out, fortunately, our inputs are these values here, and we have them labeled, thickness and threshold. Notice right now, immediately, the one, two, three, fourth value is thickness. So I'm going to tab in here, one, two, three, four. I'm going to name that to thickness. Okay. And if I delete thickness, which is 0 0.070, I can type in 0 0.070, and you see it's going to work right away. Isn't that awesome? So now I, if I adjust my thickness, it will change the thickness of that sphere, as you can see it happening there in the lower right corner. My threshold is going into the third and fifth nodes. I only need it to go into one of them. So I am going to take my fifth node. Well, I'm going to take my third value input and make it go into where the fifth node is going, which looks like they're crisscrossing here. It goes into the top. Again, you're like, holy cow, this is, well, it's, a, it's kind of a messy work, but you do it once and then you're good to go. So um, this is not thickness, but this is threshold. Do it down here, I guess. That's my threshold, and the bottom value can now just disappear. We don't need it. So now I've got my threshold going in once, and it's 0 0.120. I can now delete that, and now I can change it right there on my node group, and it's going to update it as well. Finally, this is my texture input, which is, needs to be a value of 0 to 1, really to work properly, I think. Well, you could fiddle with it. That's my top two values, so I'm going to take this first value and plug it into where the second one is going. Now the second one really isn't needed. And I'm going to change the name of this one to texture. And I'm just going to put in 0 hyphen 1, which may be a bit confusing for you know, some of the time. But what this does is it just reminds me that it's a value of 0 to 1. And there we go. So now I have a nice little group that I'm going to name. Gosh, we need a name for this. Texture slicer, because it's going to create these slices. Now what I could do with this is I can press um, Command-D to duplicate, or command, or I'm sorry, Shift-D to duplicate, or Shift-Control-D. 
to duplicate with the same input, okay? And I'm going to make a new math node, and I'm gonna add these together. Again, if you went through that first tutorial, we did this a lot, adding spheres inside of spheres and things like that. So instead of that one going in, I'm gonna plug the add into there. Make sure when you're done with what I just did there that you have the add node going into one of the two values and the other value being entered by hand, the density controller, which right now is two. These have the same value, so they're just repeating, but I can change my threshold to be larger or smaller. Okay, I'm moving a bit closer so I can do something inside of it. Maybe I'll make my outer one much thinner, my inner one a bit thicker. Maybe I'll make it larger now. And then I'll do one more, um, and I'll use this add mode again. This time, what I'm going to add, and you gotta kind of move everything down to make this possible. Uh, what I'm gonna add this time is, right now I'm adding to zero so it'll do nothing. I'm gonna add the result of these first two. You just keep adding add nodes all the way down. I'm going to add another version of this, but this one's going to be even smaller there in the middle. And it looks like thickness doesn't really matter. I can make it as thick as I want to. So I'll make it nice and thick. Um, and now again, if we do this little trick that we showed before, if we were to pull this back, you can see it kind of disappearing. I'm in edit mode pulling it back. I've created this really interesting volume with these nice, simple texture slicer shaders, um, or groups, I'm sorry, that I've created. Now, if we really want it to go kind of crazy, we'll do a Control D duplicate here. And rather than a gradient texture, I'm going to go Shift S and change it to a wave texture. And a wave texture just creates a bunch of lines. You can actually can also make a bunch of spheres, kind of like what we have here. Um, I'm going to run my fac into my texture there, and I'm going to run this guy straight into this density controller so we can fiddle with him for a minute. This is kind of, this is a bit extra, which makes me think this tutorial is going to go a bit longer than you're used to with me, but we'll do it this time for fun. Um, so I'm changing the scale attribute here. So I've got these little slices. I'm going to increase the distortion a bit to give it a little shape. And the thickness right now was four. I think I want my thickness to be like 0.1 or 0 0.05. See how much nicer it is just to do that. And I've got all this math going on that I don't have to worry about because I went through all that trouble to set it up once. And now it's just, just I've got this nice little texture slicer. Um, we are going to increase the detail a bit, which is a nice little feature. In some ways, this is a lot like high re the high resolution option on smoke, which I think we'll actually fiddle with a, just a teeny tiny bit today. Um, so I've got that. That's too much detail, though. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to uh, duplicate my add shader one more time. I'm going to run the result of all my other spheres in there, and I'm going to run in what I did here, and I'm going to run my add shader right into that, and now they're all on top of each other. I guess if you wanted like an extra credit quiz, you could try to affect the colors in a similar way, which you certainly can do. Uh, using a similar process. At this point, I'm only affecting the strength of my emission, okay, which is controlled right here with my density controller. Um, everything before that, all this other stuff is all about defining that texture. Okay, so just a quick, quick review of this. I've got my spherical gradient texture, which is going into three of my texture slicers. The texture slicer just finds a threshold in these large gradients, which all, which most of these textures are just various funky gradients. And uh, I'm slicing it into a thin thing where I can control both the threshold and the thickness of that threshold. And uh, then I have my wave texture, which I'm also running through my texture slicer group, which just tab in real quick. You can sort of remember some of the things we had going on there, some funky math that we covered. And I'm adding all of those together and running them into the multiply node I am noticing my third one is, you can't really see it, so let's see. Yeah, we're gonna thin out that middle one. I guess you can't see it because, because of the position of that. So let's uh, tweak that scale a little bit. 
Um, in fact, what I'm, well, we can do that. Let's do this. You can also add, uh, just for fun, I need, to, I need to get back to the fire here, but just one last thing. You can add a mapping node. If you set this mapping node to texture, you can, you can just move things around. Now this is only applying to my spherical gradient texture, not to the waves, okay? Because the wave texture has its own texture coordinate from the object. So I'm tweaking the object texture coordinate input for the gradient texture. Um, and I can, for instance, change the location of this, move him up along the z-axis, move him down. Uh, I can scale it up. If you drag across all three attributes, you can scale it up. That. Scale it down. It's very cool. Um, there's lots of interesting things you can do. Actually, that's kind of cool, isn't it? Ah, it's more cool when it's animating. And you can animate these things. These things are totally uh, animatable, and you can create those kinds of volumes. Okay, I'm going to save this. I'm going to call this um, texture slicer node group. That's really why we want this, because we need this texture slicer. So that's saved. We're going to go back into our previous blend project, Blender project here, where we created our smoke. And we are going to shift F1. We're in our text. Here's our texture slicer node group. And I'm going to select that. Again, we did this in the third lesson. It should make a lot of sense. Click on node tree. And now the texture slicer is there, as well as the basic volume shader. Now, I'm not going to add this to my default blend file right now, but I'm just going to, now that I've done this here, I can use it for this project. Again, I've got my smoke and my density output right here. All right. So we don't really care about our volume shader. We're not messing with color right now. And we don't really care about that guy either. We just have our density inputting to emission, and we get this smoke moving around. I am going to go to group, and now I have my texture slicer, which I appended to this project, and I have my density. And now right away, you should start to see some interesting stuff going on. If I mute this and just run right in, you can see it. I press the letter M, by the way, to mute it. Just make everything going on in here null and void. Sometimes I can do funky things with groups, but in this case, the input is basically the same as the output of value from zero to one for this box. So here's the regular. Uh, smoke applied to an emission shader, but if I use my texture slicer, it's only doing a small part of it. I can make this a lot thinner. See that? And now that gets really, really cool, doesn't it? I think it does. Just fantastically cool. Uh, I can move it way up to play with the very, very outer edges, or I can move it way down to look at some of the inner stuff. The great thing about these smoke shaders is every single voxel, every little piece of the smoke inside my domain cube is doing something interesting. And so I can, I can play with this in really interesting ways. In order to look at this at this point, we do need to uh, cache our smoke, which is something I haven't done at this point. You probably know how to do this, but I'll take you through the steps. I'm going to press Control S, brings me into uh, the save window. I'm going to save this as funky smoke. Okay, and now with my domain selected and in the physics tab, which is this last tab, I'm going to make a couple quick changes. Uh, really, uh, there's, there's just a, a few things you can do uh, really quickly to make your smoke behave in more interesting ways. Um, in fact, if I'm going to set my endpoint to maybe 96 at first here, and I'm going to turn off the cycle shader. The reason I'm doing that is because to calculate the cycle shader and calculate the smoke really puts a heavy burden on things, and it just makes it really, really slow. So I'm just going to cycle through 96 here. Increasing your divisions is the most processor-intensive step that you can do, I think. Uh, it definitely changes the behavior of your smoke, gives it a lot more texture, and makes it look really, really good. Um, but it's also very... Like I said, it just takes a lot longer to calculate. You also have an option called smoke high resolution. Smoke high resolution adds these little tiny little tendrils that come off. I'm gonna increase my divisions to two there. And now it's working. So the 32 divisions is quite low. And so the big movement of my smoke is kind of low quality, the big movement. But around it, around this big bulky kind of sluggish movement 
is a lot of small, interesting movement that makes it work. So that's one technique you can use to create some interesting looks um, without a lot of effort. If you do, as you do both of them together, it's just, it's just gonna put a big load on the system. And by upping this to 64, I mean, it really, really slows it down. Okay. But this is the setting I think I'll use for this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, with 64 divisions and two smoke high resolution divisions, I'm gonna click the smoke cache, little triangle thing. And I'm going to set it to start at one and end at 96, like I have here. I don't wanna bake more than I need to. Save this file. And I'm going to click free all bakes, which just gets rid of whatever I had here. And I'm going to click bake. You'll see a number moving along. This is percentage, so from zero to 100%. So it's trying to bake this smoke right now. Um, we'll just pause for a minute and wait for this thing to cook. All right, we are done baking. And so now what I can do that I couldn't do before is I can actually scrub along the timeline to see this uh, doing what it's doing. Now, it's not particularly interesting. It's just, it's coming out of this big bulky object. It's, it's flying up over the roof. It, there's nothing, I mean, you know, I mean, it's kind of cool, but it's not life-changing or anything, um, but it's good for our purposes. Let me go into our camera. I'm gonna move up GZ. I'm selecting the camera in my camera view. You can just actually click along the edges of the frame that'll select that camera. And uh, we can see what I'm doing here. Press GZZ real quick, moves it along the, the Z axis of the camera, which basically moves it forward and backwards. So it lets me kind of zoom in close on this. And uh, G, uh, G, Z, move it up a little bit. I really don't need to see that bottom box very much, maybe a teeny bit. But now I've got, I've got the whole thing kind of framed up. Um, I guess I could move it down a bit and then uh, rotate it X, X, the local X axis. Maybe that's slightly better to do. Just position the camera till you're happy with it. Um, okay, so there we go. Go into our box, so we're back with our, back in our domain. Here we are at our shader again. We've got a texture slicer, slicing the density input. That's going into my, what we had been calling a density controller, but now it's kind of like a emission strength controller. Serves a similar purpose. And if I press Shift Z in here, I can now tweak my threshold until I get something that's kind of interesting to me, and that's really weird. That's a really, really weird look. That's a really weird look. Interesting. That was not what I expected at all. But let's see what we can get. We already saw some interesting results here before, so let's see what we can get ourselves here. Okay, um, I'm going to up my brightness controller here. And again, this is what this is giving me is a very thin slice. Let me go into my render settings here, go under um, sampling and up my preview to 100. So it just gives me a few extra samples. What we can see here is these nice little bumps on here, which is caused by the high resolution setting particularly. Um, I guess I've got some overlapping layers here on the on the left side, which is kind of strange, but yeah, kind of interesting too. And then I can give my emission a color. It's just gonna behave like regular emission, so let's, maybe we can make it some kind of really bright orangey color. And uh, there we go. Now, like we did before, now we could take our texture slicer and control shift D duplicate that. And we'll run that into the multiply node now, perhaps and we'll make our threshold thinner. Okay. So now we get this very different kind of look and uh, we're going to add those together. Like we did before, converter math, add these two together. So now I've got uh, the one inside of the other as it moves. So I've got this little shell, but I've also got this really strong central shaft. Another thing that we could do here, rather than just add those together, let me delete that add mode. 
is I can run one into the other, uh, both getting both going into emission nodes. And now I'm going to use a add shader. So what's going on here? I've got my density controller, or my density, I'm sorry, the, just the density input which comes from the fire, going into two different texture slicers that have different settings. One is really making it just really thin in the center. One is really pushing it out to the outer edges. I've got my emission strength controller, formerly known as density controller, going into two different emission nodes that are being added together. Now at this point, my densities and my emissions are identical, so it's really going to look the same as what we had before. But now I could change my emission of the center one, for instance, perhaps to be a greenish color. All right, or a bluish color. Ooh, that's kind of cool. And uh, then I can change my strength of that emission to be weaker, or I could make it much, much stronger. You will notice that I have this light bouncing off. And remember how last time it, it uh, really speeds it up to make these things not bounce off the other surfaces? Well, we're going to do that here. Um, I guess we'll use the same technique. There are some other techniques you can use, but we're going to uh, use this technique just to keep life simple, uh, even though it's kind of a complicated setup. We are going to do a... Let's use, it really doesn't matter. Let's use transparency though. That's kind of good measures what you use a lot for emission. And we are going to do an input light path. And we are going to do a mix shader. Let me move these two guys down. What's great about this when you first start doing this sort of thing is you realize when you see these really complicated nodes on Blender artists and things like that, you realize it's really not uh, that crazy. It just means you've spent some time on it to get it to the point where you're at. So I've got this, press Control H, remember that little trick to make that go away. Um, now my orange is not doing anything uh, dangerous, I suppose, it's not bouncing off the walls, it's not being doing something expensive. Control G to group that, and I am going to add a strength node. I'm also gonna add another node, watch this, into the color of my emission, okay? And for good measure, I'm going to move color up. I'm gonna go a bit quicker here because I think you guys already know about this. Call that emit color, and we're going to call this emit strength. And we'll tab out, and I'm going to call this emit no bounce, meaning uh, none of these emissions will actually um, bounce off of the floors. I'm going to duplicate that group, press hover my mouse over this color, and uh, control C to copy, control V to paste. Kind of a nice little feature. Run that into, run my uh, emission controller, emission strength controller, formerly density controller in there. Move that in there, boom! Now, after all that mess that I did, you can see that there's no longer any light bouncing off of this surface. In fact, I really don't even need that surface, but we'll, we'll leave it there for now. All right, so now as we move through this, we can see what we have wrought, which is pretty interesting. Let me just do one more of these. Don't want it to go there. So texture slicer. I'm going to set, uh, let's do another add shader. And this will be added to this one. Move up, move down, you know, in your nodes, doesn't really matter. And sometimes it's useful to be consistent. So now I'm doubling this up right now, which I really don't want to do. Um, we're going to change the color a bit, maybe to kind of a deeper red. That's kind of cool, actually, though. Uh, I'm just going to change my Threshold a teeny bit. And my thickness, teeny bit. See, I got to negative right there and it went to a negative. It's the, as soon as I went negative on my thickness, it started absorbing things. Which can be a cool effect. I mean, if, you, if that's what you're interested in. So this outer shell, I'm gonna make it kind of pretty, pretty weak, not, not extremely strong. Um, maybe thickened up a teeny bit. And I'm not, I'm still not totally happy with this inside one. I'm not quite sure. I, I'd almost want to change the settings and rebake it just a little bit. But let's see, change the thickness. See, isn't it nice that we, that we did these groups though? I mean, it really is. Uh, these groups save so much time uh, because these are complicated nodal setups that, we, that we're repeating and we can just repeat that usage. Oh, now that's, that's interesting stuff. 
So, yeah, I'm pretty, that's pretty funky. I like that. So we got the center blue shader, maybe, do we, do we want to do? I'm thinking Grateful Dead. Why does this look like something from the Grateful Dead? I have no idea. I probably do have an idea, but I can't figure out what it is. So again, this is, this is fake looking stuff. And uh, I know you're gonna be tempted to think this is fire. It is not fire, this is not flame. Um, actually, when we work with fire, we'll use a, 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 a fairly, a different technique that you could use this with, with fire to create some funky uh, techniques. And you know what? I think I'm gonna actually change this to be, I'm gonna move this camera real close to this. I think that'll be fun, RXX. Really nice that you can put your camera inside a volume now. You couldn't do that in earlier versions. Um, make my camera a bit more wide angled maybe here. Maybe we'll make it a uh, 18 millimeter lens. See what that does. I, I may have gone too far here. Uh, that's pretty funky though, that's pretty cool. That's it. We're gonna go with that. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. Some kind of opening title sequence. Of course you'd, you'd tweak your flame to do, or your smoke. See, I called it a flame, but it's smoke. It's funky smoke, that's what we're doing. Uh, some other things you could do with this to make it uh, work in interesting ways. Definitely increase your smoke divisions. Uh, my bake here didn't take very long, just took a few minutes. Uh, I definitely do smoke bakes where it's going to take, you got you to gotta do it overnight, and it's often worth it. Wow, that's cool. It's like a nebula or something we created. That's awesome. Show uh, high resolution, or smoke high resolution makes a big difference for just these little, teeny little things. And then, of course, we've got these little slices that we're doing, which is what makes it basically not look like smoke, but look like other stuff. I've seen demos of people doing, you know, the inside of a human brain using these kind of, this kind of information they can create. Uh, there, there's some tricks and difficulties with that at this point. It might be better to use a procedural texture and try to get something kind of crazy. Um, but, the, but the general idea is there. You can use multiple colors. That's, that's the biggest thing. Multiple colors, multiple slices, have them all overlap with each other. And I'm just using emits here, just the emit node. And since I have the special no bounce, it will render uh, faster, though it will take a while to render all the same and uh, your render samples is gonna make a big difference. So I'm gonna set mine to 100, and uh, I'll tweak some other settings before I do my final render, but we won't worry about it for this tutorial because it's already getting pretty long. Here's a quick time lapse of the remaining steps that I did. Most of it was in the compositor, though I did thin out the slices a little bit. This file will be available for download, so download it, take a look, break it apart, and see what else you can come up with, and then let me know, post it. I hope you've, uh, hope you've learned something. If I messed anything up, please put it in the comments, and I look forward to the next one. Have a good one.